What's up? Gonna make a vlog and talk about mainly the inheritability of intelligence and all the shit I've read the past couple weeks about this and just general shit. So it's gonna be mainly like a sciencey sort of vlog, I guess. I had a couple conversations about it and had some heard some you know conflicting opinions and I was like curious I find this shit interesting both the information of it and the misinformation uh, I find to be you know it's interesting shit and uh, most of the data I'm gonna get here is from this it's a review article which is like a, a an article that sums up the current knowledge of a particular uh, field of science in this case it's not quite neuroscience still a subset of it but it's basically it's about uh, develop de development of intelligence amongst uh, different traits ge genetics and like culture or whatever the fuck Uh, and the person I uh, first talked to, they were claiming that, uh, the heritability of intelligence, like the, these are the variance between, you know, your performance on IQ tests or whatever the fuck would be 40 to 80%, so about 60. And they didn't have anything to back that up, so I was curious and... This was what I found, to uh, look at it specifically, in this, where is it, an article in here somewhere, it's in the genes part, probably in the first part, the, the test, uh, I don't know when I get to it, but it's, uh, it took 7,000 children, who were all 7 years old, from various ethnicities, backgrounds, whatever, and then uh, had them take tests and shit like that, as well as it uh, sequenced their genomes, or at least the relevant portions that aren't the, you know, that are different between people. And where is it? Uh, ah, here we go. Search for this one. Seven thousand subjects. You can read that here, it's genome-wide, and yeah, this. SMPs, it's a single nucleotide polymorphisms. Uh, basically, it's a nucleotide is like a, a piece of DNA. It's looking for sections of, of DNA or, or like uh, multiple sections, like one stretch of DNA might not necessarily be the uh, entirety of the uh, gene that it's being made or the proteins made thereof it could be a, a gene can be made up of uh, multi multiple strands of DNA and for humans specifically there's a lot of like uh, polynucleide uh, genes and just basically the more her complicated the organism looks <laughs> There's probably uh, more of those. I guess that's not quite true. Yeah, that, that's me talking out of my ass, never mind. But anyway, uh, the variance in IQ tests, uh, performance in the genes, they looked, they tried to take all the, uh, you know, the genetics they found, or single nuclear SMPs, and, uh, analyzed the results compared to all these 7,000 seven-year-olds and found that uh, the best they could do to explain the variance was six, I believe. There were six particular SMPs. Go here. Yeah, six markers. 
that uh, explained roughly uh, up to 1% of the variance, which was considerably lower than the 60% figure, uh, over an order of magnitude, but... You know what, like this is what this number means. It, it's not necessarily that uh, if someone's IQ is 101, that it's one like one that their parents is one percent the cause of that. It's pro the problem with uh, both looking for uh, genes that determine uh, IQ and IQ tests known themselves is that it's not easy to interpret the data. Just for the sake of argument, I, I'll, like, throughout the conversation I had in this, uh, I'm just gonna say that IQ tests are, like, completely valid and very precise, whereas their precision is debatable in some cases. Uh, how the study is, whether or not it has, like, bias for the test takers in terms of, like, what language they speak or other shit like that. Uh, wait. That's gonna... But as far as, like, just overall genetics, uh, this was the largest study I could find on it, and the one this mentions was the gen genetics overall, uh, ex explains almost 1%. And that's not to say that uh, it, 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 that it can't be 60% or something much higher, just that uh, of, of what this study found, it uh, at best explains one. And it talks about a lot of other things. Like, yeah, not, not just the difference between um, or the heritability of uh, IQ compare, uh, in terms of genetics, because you can inherit things through more than just genetics. You can like inherit it culturally, like the language you speak uh, is not. You don't you don't uh, learn that from like the genes. You learn that from your parents talking to you. Because if someone who's Japanese is adopted into a like a American family, they'll learn to speak English. Conversely, if, uh, someone who is from a non-Japanese background, is con adopted by Japanese people in Japan, they'll learn to speak Japan. Japa learn to speak Japanese. So, her heritability is not necessarily genetic or even cultural selection in that specific case. And one of the, yeah, the best ways to uh, test the uh, effect of genetics specifically on IQ as a compared to like environmental uh, or cultural just any, any kind of non-genetic influence heredity is through adoption studies of uh, taking someone of a certain genetic background and then of a opposite or any other and then see how they do when uh, adopted from every other background. It's like a cross... cross something... cross adoption study. Basically you just see how uh, people of a certain genetic background when raised in a, any kind of environmental background, particularly ones that are different from the biological parents, what's the effect on their uh, IQ. You know, they're just general cognitive ability, I guess. Which isn't necessarily easy to, like, narrow down to a single number. And even, even if it is, like, uh, the, the idea that, like, the entirety of the human psyche, intelligence, personality, your ability to, I don't know, solve Rubik's Cubes or do math, that it's all, like, reducible to one number is, is oversimplifying <laughs> intelligence, but that's, uh, part of the, uh, field, I guess, because they do have separate, uh, 
terms to describe different types of intelligence, like spatial knowledge, uh, straight up number, math, verbal, um, long short term memory, all, all kinds of different shit that. Anyway, one one of the things I found really interesting in this was of um, uh, white and black people raised, like that were adopted and raised by white or black families and all possible combinations of that, as well, uh, people who were predominantly of European or African heritage and had just a f like, like a small number of genes from uh, either or. And from the results of that, because it was, uh, there was in uh, a lot of the IQ tests that amongst in the United States through like a like predominantly black schools, their uh, te the tests scores were lo lower. But uh, when the genetic factor was controlled for of uh, you know their parents and shit, they found that it wasn't because of genetics because the uh, Europeans with some African genes didn't do any worse and the Africans with some European genes didn't do any better and also in some schools it would depend on like uh, like you know kind of like there's like segregated schools like white schools and black schools or not not, not like on paper that they won't allow it, but it they're just in the neighborhood they're in is like that and that there were fuck where is it Explain it better than I do. All I'm looking for, basically, the the conclusion was that uh, while there is a difference, it's not like like it is conclusively not because of genetics. It's because of some other factor, most likely cultural, or that uh, in some cases in the United States, there's like uh, schools in like black neighborhoods could get like significantly less funding. So. In terms of the very young, it uh, affects their cognitive ability if they're not, you know, getting as good of an education. But it's not just uh, education, there's also, I think it was uh, breastfeeding amongst, uh, c compared to people who like were born premature, it made like a huge difference, like uh, 10 points I think. Somewhere in this. If you're interested, you could probably find it yourself. I'm just kind of going through this slowly, mentioning whatever comes off the top of my head. Did, uh... Oh yeah, this part, like a uh, brain age and other kind of games where it's like it tests cognitive abilities, like do math or remember shit. And the, stu the study on that was that it's like it doesn't literally prevent you from, you know, losing any of that. You don't need to ritualistically uh, do those kind of tests. That's also neat. Although, exactly how old, I'm not sure. Like, 50 plus, 60 plus, 80 plus, 40 plus? I don't know, I don't know if I can clue. Oh, right here. 4, 8, 60, 64. 
Ooh, yeah, mask begins over time. Another thing to say that uh, IQ was mainly genetic, and uh, I think there was a lot of. Uh, yeah, it was one of the links uh, the person I was talking to gave me. Is of uh, the IQ test average is it's like is average IQ of certain countries, and most of these are. Uh, I think there's all African right here. But one thing to note was that uh, this article and other is uh, malnutrition in like the very early like developing ages of children, like toddlers, like anything under five. Uh, if they're not getting certain micronutrients, their brains and many other parts of their body won't be able to develop properly. And that's true. Uh, this yeah, like this this is from DavidDuke.com. So I feel like it's worth pointing out that uh, that happens for white people too. If you don't, you know, eat food, you don't grow. This is the, ba the, the basis of it, the basics of it. And it's called the Flynn Effect. Uh, when I was reading about it, that in cases where uh, a place is like, not just IQ, but a lot of other factors, after providing like uh, food and, and basic necessities that the IQ and other numbers like go up drastic drastically like massive IQ games over time so to, to say that it's uh, genetics in and of themselves are such a large factor uh, I guess it could be true but it, you'd have to also consider that uh, there's many detrimental effects that uh, can be associated with IQ, like uh, malnutrition, uh, poor, uh, like a, uh, abuse as children's, uh, in premature people or in premature, truly born babies if they're not breastfed. Looks like on average it said their IQs were lower. Yeah, this is fun. Yeah, it's mentioned here. Truly high rates of gain in the developing, or like, uh, not so much developing, but like, uh, industrializing? I guess developing is the best w word, or the most colloquially understood. Twenty-two point gain. 2002-2006 Unfortunately, I couldn't find... It looks like it's from Wikipedia. I couldn't find the, uh, page. Because I'm not sure what, like, sample size they're using for that. But, uh... Of this stuff... Yeah, it gave me the impression that, uh... Uh, even if these are completely 100% precise and accurate, that they could very well, they're not necessarily um, indicative of the uh, genetic uh, results of their uh, IQ. What is it? The, the genetics of their IQ? Because at, at, at best, it's an undershoot. Like, since pretty much these, most of these countries have uh, very serious problems with malnutrition and uh, in some cases war and so while this data isn't meaningless it's uh, it's hard to compare it to nations that don't have that problem or at least you can't do it uh, in any honest way I guess Sex differences we have between men and women. Oh, 
I made this, I was looking for. Oh yeah, yeah, brain size and IQ. This kind of dates back to like phrenology. If you ever read it, like 19th century science shit, like the size and shape of the brain was like the cause of certain mental attributes. It was kind of like the earliest, uh, albeit primitive form of neuroscience. I guess, yeah, that e e even though uh, white people typically have uh, larger brains than blacks, it's also true that men typically have larger brains than women, but have the same average IQ. So to say that size alone is a significant factor is not uh, true, at least not scientifically speaking. Also, yeah, that uh, in areas of, uh, particularly during like the, a lot of the testing uh, results that you'll see are from like 70s and a little earlier in, in, in from the United States as well, where there was, it was just shortly after like MLK and the civil rights movement, there, but there was still racial tension and segregation, so, you know, it takes time to sort of fix the uh, <laughs> damage done from that shit but during that time yeah like there was significant gains from uh, you know the difference between uh, black the average black response and white which is kind of more indicative that uh, the, the culture the environment they're in has a uh, much stronger role than the genetic factor does if genetics was stronger, then you wouldn't see this gain. Uh -huh. Here we go, this is a big part of the conversation I had, is uh, Ashkenazi Jewish intelligence. Basically, there's a, a handful of studies that uh, find that the uh, IQ performance of Ashkenazi Jews specifically was higher, and there's also some that finally uh, don't find that or find the opposite. So, in particular, particular we like since there's a comparatively much uh, smaller Jewish population, like 0.2 percent, something like that. Uh, well, at least of the global population anyway it's it's there's much little uh, much less data available on it and the uh, information that people use to make claims like that like it says are usually based on samples of convenience there's one I have later uh, another one pointed out that have that points that out Anyway, I'll go on to what, uh, I was having a conversation with someone and they, uh, at first they didn't have it, like, refused to offer any kind of, uh, evidence or whatever for the, the claims they made, and they point me to this, rents.com, which, uh, doesn't have a single reference or footnote, but, uh, let's see, it does reference IQ tables. Like right here, one IQ table shows these results, but it doesn't 
state where it gets that information, what the sample size was, or anything. Uh. And one thing I'm guessing the people who wrote this uh, do is that it's easy to misunderstand the results of uh, like IQ tests like that and say, oh, this is because of genetic reasons when the testing done on that confirmed that it was it was not. It was because of other reasons. Uh, the, I, I can only speculate as to what because they didn't test that. They just tested the genetic factor. But uh, it, it's significantly more likely that uh, non-genetic factors, even if they're inheritable or not, have a much, much stronger influence over intelligence than genetics do alone. References, I think, the same IQ table there. It, who is we? <laughs> I guess it keeps saying we, but it never references any data. It just declares this shit by fiat, which is frustrating because I, I I like to read about science articles and shit like this, but it doesn't have anything. And it, it cites that uh, of the size of brains in MRI. Let's see. According to twin studies, 15 to 9% of the variation in head size in brain is genetic. Now there were twin studies cited in that uh, review article and did not have this conclusion. The old science of head measurements, so it's it's accurately stating that phrenology is old, found a 20% correlation. Now, 20% is, is is not large. I think it's trying to say that like, wow, this is this is meaningful, but that's like that's about the number of times that a, a dice would show up as six if you're rolling it. You know, I guess it would be more true if it's a five dice sided dice rolling five, but it's it's a twenty percent correlation. Like a hundred percent would be all variance is explained. There's no t statistical deviation from it. Zero percent would be there's no uh, correlation. I I don't understand like. I <laughs> It's making inferences based on either data which appears to be straight up made up, or even if it's made up, it doesn't mean anything. And it tries. Ugh. I don't understand what what this article is trying. Well, I guess I do understand what it's trying to say. It's just it's saying it without evidence, and that's kind of the point. Mountains of evidence. Everyone agrees. Because I'm not... Yeah, like, I guess... Uh, the conversation I was having with the person who gave me this... I don't think that... Uh, necessarily... Every... Uh, nationality, every person... Race, ethnicity, whatever... Like, must necessarily average the same IQ. Because... There's differences between people and populations. I'm not disputing that it's just if you're going to describe what those differences are you need to you know have information to base that on studies of those populations
this this is straight up not true the te the studies mentioned in that review article do not reach this conclusion Like the most frustrating part of reading this is that it just it, every sentence there's like a new claim made without any references to where it's from. Another thing they had here was the distribution of uh, basically white responders and black responders of uh, this, the National Longitudinal Survey of Labor Market Experience of Youth. Now I looked at the source for this and uh, I guess first off it's like even if it's E even if the information from this is entirely precise and accurate, it doesn't mean it's because of genetics. It could be some other factor, uh, which is the likely response from the uh, test referred to previously. But as for this specific uh, graph, the information this is based on uh, used the, um, what was it? It's like the American the Armed Forces something test. Crap. It, it, it's like when you uh, a, a military aptitude test, basically, basically that people take when they want to enter the military. I guess it's what uh, Muhammad Ali famously uh, took and flunked out on. Anyway, the if you read the questions from the tests, they're not like intelligence questions per se. A lot of it is just straight up factual knowledge, like basic, like, oh, like not basic, but trigonomic questions or shit like that. Things where it's not necessarily, uh, it, like if you're uneducated but intelligent, you you wouldn't know the answer because it's not a test of intelligence, it was mainly a t test of uh, education, like, kind of like a GED almost. But e e even, uh, that, that didn't apply to m all the questions, but Probably most of them, if you, uh, from the ones I read, anyway. But yeah, uh, this doesn't control for genes, so it's not really evidence that, uh, they're, they're, they were arguing that uh, white people on average are smarter than black people, and that's because of uh, genetic inheritances, but that's, like, they did, th th this, after, like, pressing, this is the information, Part of the information they offered and the like the, the larger sample sizes didn't do not that control for genetics do not have this uh, they don't they don't have that argument the, the result is it's because of non genetic factors but this graph here um, well first off the, the y and x x axis aren't labeled um, th this x-axis here, I'm guessing these numbers are IQ, but strictly speaking, it's, you know, it's not written. As for what Y is, I have no fucking clue. Um, again, doesn't mean that, uh, e even if, whatever the fuck this is supposed to mean, uh, if it's... Uh, entirely accurate. It's not because of genetic, not necessarily because of a uh, uh, genetically inherited responses. This, I think, had the largest sample size. It's better, but again, not necessarily genetic. 
The main argument was that it's genetic, but it's it's, it's like you're oversimplifying intelligence and genetics by saying that. Uh, like while there are differences, t to say that any difference must be genetic is is what's the word I'm looking for? It's it's like jumping to conclusions. I know there's a word for that. I forgot it though. Uh, let's see. This is the IQ average of certain. One thing to notice is that uh, I, I, I'm, I'm like right in my right in my head. I'm literally inside my head right now. I'm thinking of like the ethnography, like the directions which people uh, traveled as they were, uh, you know, creating new countries. And this is like the uh, oldest area, but it's also the area where there's the most, like, socioeconomic problems. Uh, here's... Yeah, like, I, I, basically the same shit as to why the other things were jumping to the conclusions. Like, it's hard hardly say that this is evidence. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah here. And, uh, this is, uh, of the, uh, the family income of the black and white test takers. And they argued that this was like a control group, and it is, it controls for family income, that is a control group, but it does not control for genetics, which is what you're trying to claim here, that genetics is the difference. And the study that did, that I talked about previously, did, it doesn't make the conclusion that they're making. So I guess, like, every time I, uh, brought up the, you know, the studies from that uh, review article with, like, the largest sample size that it referenced. They just dismissed it outright as if, like, that cannot be true. What I already believe must necessarily be true. And, uh, one of the graphs that they have uh, re referenced this, and it this is about, uh, yeah, yeah, this uh, it was a graph detailing that, um, ha the, the people who have, uh, like, half, uh, 50%, like, European, 50% African heritage get, like, right in the middle between complete European and complete African heritage on IQTIS, and it does not make that conclusion. So, like, I don't know what, uh, this seems like purely select data to me. What, they were making... A lot of the arguments they made came uh, from this paper, Natural History of Ashkenazi Intelligence, as well as the uh, exact numbers they were quoting of 40 to 80 percent heritability. And I, I read that and I was questioning a lot of the statistics it made, and it turns out a lot of other people did too, and there's actually literally papers made that just describe how this paper is wrong, not because it's like making uh, dangerous claims or that anything like that, just that it's shit science. <laughs> and this one, basically for Ashkenazi Jews specifically, it's like, uh, if you've seen the Merch Red of the Merchant of Venice, it's about like uh, Jews, where they uh, lived and how they, how they lived, the jobs they had to do were like, you know, things that required really uh, strict intelligence, and that was, like, over the centuries from, like, the year 800 to, like, 1200-ish. Those were, you, you know, like, they had a selection for that. And the funniest thing that I found was a, an actual loan contract from 1179. Uh, at just how basic the money lending contract is. Where it's like, you get this much money after a certain amount of time, give me this much back. And the amount of interest, and it's like... 
<laughs> this isn't string theory. There's a saying that, like, money lending in, in and of itself is not like, you don't need to be a genius. Because, <laughs> uh, another thing that I uh, mentioned from the Wrench in Nevada is quite accurately is that, uh, uh, the Christian religions, or the non-Jewish ones, predominant there in England at the time, viewed uh, money lending as unethical. So that was one of the things that uh, essentially non-Christians, or in this case the Jews, could do. Because there was uh, discrimination against them where they wouldn't let them learn other trades like blacksmiths or whatever the fuck. But it takes, yeah, there's at least, like, th this is the only, like, full-up, straight-up article that is literally just based, uh, describes how the statistics mainly used in that do not mean what they think it means. Uh, let me see if I can remember some things. One of the things that uh, the original paper did, I remember now, Natural History of Astronomy Intelligence, is it cites um, an IQ study from the 1970s, I think by Bachman et al. It would be mentioned. Anyway, it had them at, uh, it quotes it saying that, uh, the Jews were 15 at, 14 points higher, 125 perhaps. Anyway, the study was done in 2005 or 2006, I think, and, uh, the, the, the natural history of Ashkenazi intelligence was, and the study it's quoting is from the 1970s, and... It uses that uh, as, you know, proof or evidence that the uh, IQ of Jews is much higher, but a, stu a study done in seven years later with a much larger sample size, because the previous one had 27, I think, Jews? It's pointed out here somewhere. I think in this section. But anyways, the one with larger sample size found that it's, uh, oh, here, here we go. Nineteen seventy five, in which their scores were worse than some. Overall, of ninety six. So it's basically, it's it's based on select data, which is like when they, there's a, a bunch of studies that uh, find, you know, a range of results and you only pick them from the range that you want, uh, which is not good science. Because another thing I noticed in talking to this person is they had extreme confirmation bias or any time I uh, had a counter argument or cited a study done on it, they would just, if it didn't uh, confirm uh, or reinforce their uh, preconceived beliefs, they would just deny it outright, which is pretty extreme confirmation bias, which to their credit they acknowledged. But uh, it seemed to be based on this uh, natural history of uh, Ashkenazi intelligence, which. Uh, yeah, it, it's select data. It also makes the claim that uh, th there's a bunch of, uh, what was it, lysome, I know it's lysomes, it's the, uh, the organelle that uh, essentially would capture things and break it down. Lysome. 
Here we go. Lysosomal storage diseases. There we go. Tay-Sachs, Goucher, even pick type A. Uh, the one people may have heard of here is Tay-Sachs disease. But yeah, the lysome is the uh, organelle in the cell that breaks things down into their uh, proteins or whatever their like base uh, elements are. I guess no, not elements because we would probably just be proteins. And it argues that uh, the range of these diseases is it shares a relationship with Jews and intelligence in the way that the uh, what is it, the malaria, sickle cell, sickle cell anemia, where it's a heterozygotic uh, relationship where if two alleles for the sickle cell are shown, then they will have sickle cell anemia, and it's a pretty uh, dangerous disease. But if they only have one allele, so if you can have one, like one or two or zero, if you have two, you get... Uh, sickle cell anemia and you'll probably die from it if you have one however only one of the two then you'll have a essentially a resistance to malaria or at least improved resistance to it so it's uh kind of argues that amongst jewish people that these lysosomal storage diseases are there that when there's two uh alleles for it they get these horrifying diseases which also kill people and when there's only one they get the boosted intelligence which it, it is an interesting hypothesis it doesn't really conclude like like have much evidence to conclude that it just sort of offers it as a potential hypothesis but uh when it was researched later, they uh, found that it was more like more likely to do the founder effect when uh, a population is like founded by a certain group, like uh, Co Christopher Columbus going to Spain or I guess uh, Colombia, whatever the fuck. Uh, like any anyone who like uh, leaves their country goes to a different one, and then like from them and their family, they create you know, a huge population of millions. They founded that population, and any genes they had would have been passed on, whether they have positive or negative benefits or not. And as opposed to natural selection, where it would, uh, like a gene is, is uh, selected for through like, a, in a po is selected for in a population over generations. This is when a set of genes isn't so much selected for by like uh, natural selection but rather it's uh, in the start of a population that it is founded uh, by a single person or in a specific case of Ashkenazi Jews I think they had it to four different uh, mitochondrial E's mitochondrial DNA being the uh, a certain uh, organelle inside cells, uh, mitochondria that make ATP, they have their own DNA separate from like the normal DNA of people. But the mitochondrial DNA is unique in that it's only inherited from the mother, not the father. So it's much easier to determine like a history, like of a, a family, is so, like ancestry from uh, the. Anyway, by examining the genes of the uh, lysosomal storage diseases, they found that the uh, localization of the genes is much more indicative of a founder effect than any kind of selection. And for uh, the natural history of Ashkenazi intelligences hypothesis that the uh, IQ was selected for in a heterozygotic relationship is then likely not true is because of how the uh, genes are localized and that that doesn't mean that it's uh, it cannot be true that it's just not because of a 
probably not because of a uh, natural selection. It's more likely due to a founder effect. Because it could just also be that, uh, you know, g genetics is uh, of that population of those four uh, women. They were just super smart and had those disease uh, genes for those diseases. Uh, granted, you would need to do essentially in order to confirm that you need to do the same study of uh, essentially white white families, black families across adoption study, which found that uh, there's no uh, reason to think there's a genetic factor, at least not a significant one. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't find any cross adoption studies for Jews versus non Jews, but all the information I could find was. It ranged from saying the opposite to saying the same thing. It's there's, there's very little information and it's contradictory. Uh, when I was talking to the person about this, they then later retracted their previous statements and said that it's not because of IQ tests or all that, it was uh, inductive arguments over the number of uh, Jews that are like very successful or prominent, like how many Nobel Prize winners are Jewish versus the number of the population. And it's true that the more Nobel Prize winners are Jewish than, well, I think it's like 25% are, whereas they make up only like 0.2% of the uh, population. But again, that's you, you can't say that's because of genetics. You don't know if that's for cultural reasons or non-genetic factors. They're just presuming it is without any reason. But yeah, I'll link all these articles. If you're into this shit, you can read it too. I'll probably make another one of these on uh, climate change because well, there's a lot. Uh, reading some of the uh, anti climate change stuff is pretty interesting. I find that like misinformation around science can be as interesting as the science in and of itself in some cases. Like, if the people who, like the person I was talking to here, was just so strongly believed uh, that. Genetics are the, uh, like a strong influence in IQ, even though they didn't have any real reason to think that. At least not any scientific one. Uh, yeah, I guess that's it for now. See ya.